The NFL just signed a $110 billion deal with its broadcast partners. It is a price maker and Fox, CBS, NBC, and Disney are paying a huge amount of money because they're afraid of Amazon. We break it down in today's video. It is Monday, March 22nd. Happy second day of spring. This is the Piper Rundown. We analyze business and culture to help you win. Today's rundown is presented by Jetstore. Jetstore has been providing affordable, reliable, and easy to manage data storage and cloud solutions to over 4,000 customers worldwide for more than 26 years. Jetstore offers storage systems for private cloud hosting, video surveillance, internet of things, AI, machine learning, edge computing, data archiving, HPC media production, medical imaging, and flight simulations. So if you need storage for flight simulations, they got you covered. For more details, visit jetstore.com. Thank you for sponsoring the rundown. In addition to listening to your copy, I just learned that it is spring. Yes. I didn't know that. Congratulations. <laughs> Knowledge. <laughs> Congratulations are also in order for the NFL. They have just uh, it, it effectively finalized an 11 year TV deal with their different network partners, totaling over $110 billion, billion. Dollars in value. In conjunction with this new deal, they will be introducing a 17 game schedule, one more than the pre uh, previous uh, norm for, yes. for many decades of 16 games which their partners are excited about. Basically everyone other than the players is excited about it. And some players are because they're gonna get compensated sure. a little bit more, but money makes the world go round. And uh, this deal estimates that the value of a single NFL game at over $40 million. That makes me angry. I, I get the hype around football. It's whatever. It just makes me mad. How, how is that a thing? Modern gladiators. Whatever. No, no. You're telling me that if there were real gladiators, you wouldn't go at least see it once just to see what was up. I no, uh, no. Well, that makes one of us <laughs> to give you a sense. And we always talk about this when there are big deals, who is the price taker? Who is the price maker? It's pretty obvious here. Fox, CBS, NBC in the pre in the previous deal were all paying about one billion dollars per year. That has been escalated to two billion dollars a year. So they are doubling their effective valuation and compensation for the rights to stream these NFL games. Disney goes up from 2 billion to 2.7 billion. They have exclusive rights to both Monday night football and the highlight packages that fill the airwaves, Sports Center, all that good stuff, uh, ESPN being within the Disney holding company. And they'll have two Super Bowls as a part of this. Amazon also gets in the game with an extended quantity of exclusive Thursday night football games being streamed via the Amazon Prime package. This is the first entree by the tech giant to be streaming these games in an exclusive manner. Previous deal saw them doing that in conjunction with Thursday Night Football being released on the NFL Network. Yes, it is the first all digital package deal with the NFL, so that's very exciting. Uh, CBS has the exclusive rights to the AFC Sunday afternoon games, which is also available on their Paramount Plus streaming service. That's, that's the interesting thing about this whole new deal is all of these different networks now have their own streaming capabilities. Um, except for Fox, because Fox sold Fox. all their assets to Disney. Correct. Uh, yes, Fox, speaking of Fox, has the exclusive rights to all the NFC Sunday afternoon games and uh, NBC has snagged the Sunday night football rights. It is the number one primetime show across, I don't know, for many years running now. Uh, they also are going to be streaming on Peacock, their streaming platform. And I found it interesting. I This was staggering to me. I don't know why it was so surprising, but the NFL, in their press release announcing all these different deals, said the NFL, uh, of course, they would talk about themselves in this way, is the most valuable content in all of sports, which at its surface, like, yeah, okay, understandable. But all of sports and entertainment, 24 of the last 25 and 77 of the more of the 100 most 
watched programs and TV have been NFL games in the last five years. That's amazing. Yeah. 24 out of 25, 77 out of 100. Price maker, not a price taker. Facts. So a couple big uh, themes that come out of this deal, you can usually infer the incentives. Sometimes those are aligned, sometimes they're not aligned, and in those cases, the price maker gets to set the terms. The first is that Amazon is a fantastic stocking horse if you are in a multi-sided negotiation. You know that they've got a ton of cash they can bring to the table. You know that there are more US adults with Amazon Prime memberships than go to church. So you know they have real distribution. And you could argue that Sundays are more of a football yeah. uh, event than a religious event. In some households, definitely. For an enormous yes. amount yeah. of the US population. But as a stocking horse, the capacity to extract terms from these other players and see this precipitous rise in prices is a fantastic tool. So if we ever get the opportunity to have Amazon as the counter bidder with another party, mm -hmm. We're gonna be sitting pretty. Sitting pretty. The second part is that streaming is not really ready for prime time yet. And there's other folks that have done a better job of explaining this in depth from a technological standpoint, but there is a reason that broadcast television has seen a massive departure of the scripted, highly produced shows and not necessarily that same departure for live coverage, namely in the form of sports and news. Those are being uh, produced live. Those need the high fidelity cable wires being able to distribute that soundly across the entire country, across the entire planet. And live sports, because of the enormous audiences, has very, very high stakes to the fidelity of those broadcasts, for which TV is still the best solution. The internet broadband is not quite at that same level. And so the NFL realizes that and what they are basically seeing this deal as is two things. Number one, an entree into streaming. Mm -hmm. streaming. There's this idea, you know, within 11 years, that technological growth should at least be more viable, if yeah. not solved over that period of time. And they have three enormous partners who are going to be uh, laying the foundation for that in CBS, in NBC, mm -hmm. and in Amazon. <laughs> The other side is that it is mildly more pessimistic than the previous deal on the long-term future of broadcast TV. What that means is the deal that just ended that is expiring uh, this year is only nine years long. Mm -hmm. And this deal is 11 years. So once again, as a price maker, you're basically choosing, and they have an opt out in seven years and you know they, they have some flexibility. But as a price maker, you're also setting the terms of how long you wanna be with that partner. And them saying we want a longer deal mm -hmm. is effectively locking in more of their future earning capability than they have felt the desire to in the future. So that might be a mildly bearish viewpoint on what the mid to long term view of broadcast TV is even for live sports, the bell of the ball when it comes to that part of the telecoms industry. So a lot of interesting parts there. Um, we'll see a significant uh, increase in the salary cap over the coming years, which means more money for players, also a lot more money for owners, also stratospheric increase in NFL franchise prices, which were already jaw droppingly large. And a win for Roger Goodell. Oh, Ever so credit rare. to him, Roger Goodell, God. We cover streaming, media, business, all sorts of stuff all the time on this channel. If you found that valuable, make sure that you hit subscribe, ring the bell. We drop new episodes of the Piper Rundown every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We also do other cool videos that you can check out by scrolling through our channel. But before you scroll to those other videos, stick with us because we have the largest M&A deal yet of the year 2021 to cover. Pretty exciting. When you play Monopoly, yes. do you pursue the acquisition of the railroads or is that not your game? I absolutely pursue the railroads. Railroads, couple of, couple of other Monopolies, I feel like I am in a good spot. Everyone, I can get the railroads for pretty cheap in Monopoly, but not 
in real life. <laughs> so two of the seven largest railroads in North America, Canadian Pacific and Kansas City Southern have agreed in essence to a deal worth over $25 billion, some cash, some stock. The issue here is that the railroads fit squarely into that arena of things that they do not want to see monopolies. So Kansas, uh, Canadian Pacific has actually had a deal back in 2016 mm -hmm. squashed yeah. with Norfolk Southern for antitrust concerns. Um, but the indication that they've announced this deal and come to terms suggests that perhaps it could actually be seen to fruition. Yes. And the underpinning of this, we talked last year about the passage of the USMCA, the new NAFTA free trade deal between Canada, US, and New Mexico. There is the expectation that we will see even more open trade between the three countries that make up North America. And the primary way in which goods are shipped around the continent are either via water or via rail. And so the roll up would basically say Canadian Pacific, which uh, has most of its railways in Canada and some of the northern states of the US, have the capacity to connect and sell deals all the way from Mexico all the way up to Canada. Yes, yes the Kansas City Southern Railroad their track runs the length of Mexico through Texas and through its namesake, Kansas City. Um, I was surprised these are two of the smallest of the seven North American freight carriers, which, which makes sense that it, it's not facing quite as many antitrust concerns as the deal we previously mentioned. Yeah, if you were merging the top four, you'd, yeah. you'd see pretty... See a monopoly there. Yeah, but new company, $8.7 in revenue, over 20,000 employees, and uh, more stuff getting to you at potentially higher or lower prices. I don't, have, I don't have any speculation on what that actually would mean to commodities, but everything is overpriced right now. If you don't see inflation as being here in the present now, not coming, not maybe, but here. You're not paying attention. And I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, neither do I. Not a fan. But we're a fan of you. If you watch to the end, please hit subscribe, ring the bell, and thanks for watching.